Hi there. I've uh, been trying out the BOS, an old operating system way from the early 2000s, an alternative to Mac OS and Windows, and yeah, very promising, but it died a very early death. Um, I made a clip on BOS R5, and uh, some people uh, noted that uh, BOS is actually still being developed actively as an open source OS and that it is actually backwards compatible with the old software without uh, recompilation or without it being based on Linux. It's really from the ground up a new OS that is compatible, backwards compatible with, uh, with the old OS. and. Of course, there's all sorts of things that pop in my mind, pop up in my mind, like, yeah, well, you know, you have the old executables, you can you can run them on the new um, operating system, the new version, the reimagined version, but there's bound to be compatibility issues, like, you know, libraries not being the same and stuff. So I'm actually quite curious how it performs. It doesn't want to run on the old Pentium, Pentium 2 hardware, it needs a, a faster system, pro preferably actually two cores even, uh, or more. So a core to duo, core to quad, uh, from around that time, basically is the best hardware to run it on. Now I don't have that hardware anymore. I used to have an HP core to duo, and later it was a core to quad, with an Nvidia graphics card, but that has uh, ceased to be. And I still have the processor, but I don't <laughs> have the HP. So I'm actually using this, trying this out in Kimu, which, which is a hardware virtualization that goes beyond what PCM is capable of, because it actually uses hardware virtualization um, to some extent. Um, oh, wow. If you, if, you, if you listen very carefully you might be able to uh, to hear the torrential rains I mean it's it's May the end of May uh, May 26th I believe actually this is Pola Ventress's birthday so Pola happy birthday um, you can actually see that uh, at least in my neck of the woods planet Earth seems to think it's fall but then again, fall weather and spring weather actually have very many things in common with temperatures, sunshine hours changing. So I guess planet Earth responds in a similar way. Anyways, uh, haiku can only be experienced for me on Kimu, an emulator, and I'm using ultra wide. And if I do full wide, well, whatever. Let's go check out my experience of uh, Kimu and uh, Kimu haiku on Kimu. Kimu, my experience. Let's go check it out. Okay. The recording has started. Haiku. Haiku. Uh, yeah, this is the latest incarnation of uh, BOS. Uh, some people have. Uh, pointed this out to me. Uh, yeah, it's it's a, a later version of BOS. It's actually currently still in development. And um, it's not based on Linux. It has its own kernel. And it's backwards compatible with the binaries built for the other version of BOS, BOS R4 and R5, but that is, there are differences in the uh, in the underlying libraries, so that not all apps will actually work, and it's best to uh, to recompile it. But I'm actually very impressed by uh, how it works, and actually. Uh, the best hardware to run this on still is slightly older hardware, like a 32-bit um, Core 2 Duo, you know, an HP uh, Core 2 Duo with four 
uh, gigabytes of RAM, an 8 gigabyte hard drive that actually seems to be uh, yeah, the best uh, platform to run this on. So there's still uh, very many people uh, that are involved with this. And uh, of course, it's a lot more compatible with uh, modern day internet because yeah, it's a, it's a connected, it's a connected uh, internet. <laughs> net positive is called web positive. The old net positive is still capable of being executed. I've actually uh, got some some of the old apps ported uh, to take over for net net positive net net positive. It still runs. This is the uh, original, um, but of course it um, isn't capable of communicating uh, properly. And I think this actually, uh, if I if I if I get the uh, the uh, the files over the HTML files over that this actually navigates to because this, this is actually a bit of the uh, that's supposed to, that was actually running on the uh, of the hard drive. Uh, monitor the test. That's also another application that is just you know the old uh, BOS like 20, 20 uh, years ago, two thousand three. Minesweeper I compiled in two thousand, and that's just Minesweeper, very similar to the uh, Windows Minesweeper, and for some reason it just decides to pop up way above the uh, oh yeah and you can actually drag around the tabs this is this is good for overlapping windows so you don't uh, you use the tabs to actually select the overlapping window so you tile them and you select these tabs and that's actually better check BFS still possible but you know it doesn't do a lot chart it's a chart a star chart animation slow rotation display direct window so we can actually do the uh, multitasking uh, bit. Let's see, uh, apps. Oh, these are all the ones that I installed. If you go to another one, BOS Haiku, and you go to system, and you go to the system apps. So it's really actually quite interesting to see a newer OS. It's, I think this one, uh, let me see. If I go here about Haiku, the, uh, the kernel was actually built uh, in 2000. What is it? This is a later kernel. I'm not sure if it says this is the uh, R1 Beta 2, which actually is built. Oh, May 24th, 2021, and I believe I ran an update. So actually, <laughs> it's 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 very recent, um, which is which is actually very nice. Uh, let me see uh, apps and then uh, see if there's these uh, uh, pulse for example pulse is launch launch box that's actually a launcher that sits over there oh dos box oh yeah So, I mean, <laughs> the system becomes more capable than ever before. Of course, I shouldn't go overboard, I guess, with... Uh, <laughs> but, but let's do the old multitasking thing. Uh, and I think Milky Tra Tracker, that's actually a newer... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, even, even PlayStation Portable. 13, meg 13 megabytes, you know, these apps are just incredibly tiny uh, yeah it'll pop up of course this really needs accelerated hardware and uh, only a few graphics cards are supported and although this is going pretty speedy um, this is not accelerated on my hardware so um, yeah I mean the processor uh, can calculate fast enough for speedy emulation, but just uh, the 
or demos, I think demos, yeah, this is the, the demos bit. So, pulse. So you can actually see I have a core to a quad and Mandelbrot, which generates uh, a mandala. And now you can actually see that it actually is uh, multi-core. And of course, because more stuff is running at the same time. Uh, I believe this system has a 512 uh, megabytes of RAM and configured and an eight gigabyte hard drive. I think if I close this down, this might be faster. I'm not sure. But basically, I guess the way uh, the graphics are run, and they're actually, I mean, you can do full screen, uh, full screen dragging and stuff. Uh, probably is just using frame buffer. Uh, Haiku 3D, I'm not sure. Oh, that's just an OpenGL implementation of the logo, which is nice. They just spin around. And I still, look, this is 40 frames, 20 frames per second. So another teapot, another teapot, another teapot, another teapot. You can actually see that this probably uses one thread or something, but you can actually see that, um, move it slower, uh, move it smaller, I mean. You can actually see that uh, the core to quad actually, of course, is quite a bit faster than the Pentium 233 Cortex. I'm not sure what that is. I guess that's just uh, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this is uh, this is uh, the way audio, the way stuff is uh, inter interacting. I guess media add-on. Add this is a, a way to view clock. That's not changed one bit. It's just the same. You can have different faces. <laughs> quite like I quite like that design. That's a st uh, st uh, chart. So, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it does give it a, a bit of a Mac OS, Linux uh, alternative OS feel, and you can you actually can um, mount oh, BOS applications, BOS 5 Pro. Oh, that's the old hard drive. That's cool. So if I uh, open up the old net positive, uh, it wants to download boot documentation. So if I do that documentation and I drag that over uh, to systems, yeah, it, it, it has different uh, it has different layers. But documentation, yeah, I, I could I could I could if I navigate towards it and I open it up. Probably it'll just be, oh, that's actually quite nice. I'll, I'll do the old documentation, the old B documentation. Uh, this is my home menu, so I do documentation. Yeah, that's actually quite nice, but go one up. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. You really can't go up easily. You just navigate back and then you're, <laughs> you don't know where you are. So that's 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 still a bit of a thing, you know. It's 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 navigating the um, navigating all the folders and stuff. It's a bit clunky still, but I mean, it looks really nice, and I think it's really interesting that it's just so, and then uh, and then it just uh, it doesn't like to close. <laughs> um, I go user guide. Let's unmount this. Oh yeah, I can I can show you some of the demos that are on there. These are links that won't work because this is actually mounted. You can actually see that by the leaf. Um, quite curious actually if this would run on this hardware. Might give it a go. Let's see if it uh, let's see if it works, but I don't think so. Um, 
optional movies yeah these were the old fun movies i'm not sure if it'll actually work this time because uh it uses an avi no it just doesn't want to work that's a shame because uh these were actually quite funny movies i might actually show it in the old uh, bios 5 pro setup and uh, sound midi quick brown fox yeah for some reason the uh, the media server on my hardware really isn't working properly yet so that's a, that's a bit of a thing it's not well, it's, it's kind of quite picky when it comes to hardware and mount but i quite like it there's um uh, let me see there's stuff that i took from the old oh i didn't get any toys oh i was trying to get some toys but uh, they didn't work toys from the old uh, a lot of it is actually these these things are actually taken from the old reflection i think this is a reflection uh, water reflection tool color mode uh, so start simulation so this actually simulates uh, the surface of a body of water and I really like it I actually programmed something similar in Turbo Pascal um, after um, um, I got a lecture on wave physics on uh, surfaces and it's actually quite fun to, uh, to program that uh, I'm not sure if I still um, have uh, the sources for that somewhere. It was programmed in Turbo Pascal. Recognition. Um, yeah, shame it, it, this is not running. Uh, it's actually quite interesting. Uh, file, database report, database, there's no database yet. Um, you can, there's, there's a recognition programmed into that, a sort of AI stuff that uh, allows you to experiment with rats moving through a, uh, a maze. Quite interesting stuff. I really like that kind of stuff. I was into that stuff when I was at university. And this actually brings me back to those days. You know, it was actually fairly easy to program on and to develop um, on. And that is actually lost when it comes to... Um, uh, when it comes to modern day operating systems like windows there's just uh for me it's it's too yeah there's too many hoops to jump through but you know i might actually give that a go i started to work less um, i have uh two days in the week that i actually am not working uh some of that uh, i will devote to studies perhaps i'll upgrade my video output or just you know be more professional about my videos on YouTube. Yeah, this is a simulation of uh, fish and shark. I love I love these uh, simulations. They they do give they have of course very simple rules, but they do uh, simulations uh, do give a, a very nice insight in uh, why uh, biomes or uh, ecosystems, why populations are stable and why they're not. Uh, Attraction is a really cool app uh, that sadly is not working properly on on this version of uh, of uh, BOS Haiku. I'll, I'll run it. So a pixel is is generated and 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 they'll attract. And now these other things they they should actually be. Hey, look at that that's cool they have different mass and fluid so they do behave differently but they're all they're all looking the same and on the original um, on the original uh, they would actually be not all dots they would look different but for some reason heavy pixel wall <laughs> everything gets sucked in physics like that I really really like uh, simulations like that you know I think that is actually the stuff that's also used in um, 
you know, like um, the, uh, the physics um, uh, that NVIDIA uses, you know. Organizer, this, this organizer also stems from uh, 20 years ago, 2002. It still runs. It has a lib and it uses those libs. And uh, yeah, you can, you can put the libs in a general library or you can actually have the libs uh, somewhere else. But this actually, yeah, it's, it shows, an, uh, it shows uh, an organizer. So today let's add an appointment and I'll say, uh, check out the mailbox and take meds on 1300, oops. And then, <laughs> so yeah, this is why these older apps, I mean, you can run them, but uh, the code generated for it probably doesn't like uh, the underlying OS that much. So yeah, but, and, and basically, of course, for all the apps, um, you have your, uh, uh, this is an, a chat, this is an internet chat, uh, 1989, I don't think you'll still be able to connect <laughs> IRC connection. Uh, this was an RSS reader. Good setting shifts, but no, replace no. Nope. Tourists. So yeah, I'm not sure how next feed. Bbit next feed. So I guess there's uh, a couple of feeds that got yeah, fortune. There's only one feed, so probably you'll be able to uh, put some uh, RS. It still works, so that's cool. Uh, RS reader. You know, uh, I like this. Uh, I have HDHD, so ADHD. I always say the H is view. I'm not sure. Oh, this is, uh, I think this is also a, uh, an IRC. Uh, Felix, this used to be Felix. Or was it Tilix? Tilix or Kermit or something like that. That was uh, an, an MS-DOS. Uh, Dinner. I think this is one of these. Um, oh, that actually links to documentation. Oh, there it is. Uh, HTTP server. <laughs> so you actually have a, a, a small web server that you can just click, and uh, that's actually quite interesting. Uh, graphics, anime. This is a, a little application from 2000 that actually allows you to create GIFs. Uh, animated GIFs. And I've tried this and it seems to still work. Art Paint is another uh, application from back in the day. Um, I think this is uh, shareware. Yep. A lot of uh, new project, create canvas, and uh, it's really quite quite speedy with uh, advanced physics when it comes to brushes and stuff. So yeah, it's it's cool. Um, and something that was actually quite uh, quite different from back in the day. We were used to uh, Windows Paint or something like that. Uh, this is oh, this is an image converter. It, it processes uh, images on that uh, on um, uh, what is it? Yeah, just just you know a lot of images at once. If you want to do a certain um, color grading or you know thing to it then you can actually process all the uh, images in a batch, which can be interesting. And Wonderbrush, that's also um, an app. And this, this actually is the old, the old one. This actually is the one from, from back in the day. I think, yeah. But I also have a newer version of it. Well, new, open, oh, so it, it, it actually uh, starts up in transparent mode. So you can actually see some, some problems with the uh, 
the brush and the underlaying structure of the uh, of the blocks not being updated properly so yeah I mean older software really I mean it, it runs and if you're in a pinch it'll run but uh, yeah you'd bet you're better off using newer software so yeah this is actually uh, perhaps a better or a different um, duplicate so you, you I mean it's nicer to have uh, uh, stuff like that when you want to uh, move files around. Filer is another one. This is just a simpler, simple starter thing system. So it has a nice backdrop and stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can actually see that the GUI is a lot uh, more clunky uh, than what we're used to. Uh, emulators. Emulators is something that I got from back in the day. Some of them still work, like the Apple II. Uh, disk reset. So, <laughs> file disk one, uh, apps, emulators, Apple II, and my disk no reset, I'm not sure, but yeah, I mean, Apple II emulation. Uh, from 1999 still running on a modern day OS it's actually quite interesting sweet 16 uh, invalid argument find no I guess this uh, sweet 16 doesn't doesn't want to run here uh, Atari 2600 that used to run but it doesn't seem to produce a GUI on this hardware so yeah that just doesn't run then we have basilisk and that's from 2002 and that actually still runs uh, I tried it the other day so it's actually quite interesting so this boots the uh, an imaged hard drive of my LC3 system <laughs> this is my LC3 and uh, no Apple talk, but it actually has, um, it, it, it does see the, uh, the disk that I installed, WordPerfect, for example. <laughs> it still runs. And not too shabby. Oops, files, you have to keep your button pressed. Um, let me see, games. Uh, Wolfenstein. Now, I would be surprised if that ran, but uh, uh, the processor may run slowly. Oh, wow. I mean, this was the stuff of legends uh, back in the day, you know, to have an OS and uh, to have a um, a game run in a window. Of course, they all would run in the window. Oh, it's still black and white. Um, oh, this is actually not too shabby. I mean, it is hogging uh, the processor, but uh, oh, there's there's Holt. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it playable, but don't save, and let's just shut it down. Uh, applications. So it's actually quite funny to see. <laughs> Let's get Navigator 3.1. Oh, uh, it needs more memory. To actually see Mac OS run in a virtual machine on BOS because yeah, BOS actually was born out of people not feeling the direction of. Uh, I think this needs uh, ROMs. That still works. Uh, VNES, yeah, it also needs games, but it seems to start up all right. I'm curious after the uh, screen refresh and stuff. Uh, Sega Master System, also from 2001. Whoops. Oh, wow, cool. A debugger. Uh, this is this is 
I uh, think I think I should type something here. Reboot. Exit. Uh, threads. Uh, ES. No. Help. Continue the current thread. Stop. Stop 3030. Threads. Stop 3029. Segment village. Okay, so yeah, it really is a memory. I mean, it's interesting to see that you can still actually uh, variables. You can actually see what uh, what is going wrong. Help. And I guess you can. Uh, so save debug report. Save report let's see if I can so the report is there and quit kill so perhaps it's best to just reboot restart the system <laughs> so yeah it's it's not th that this is actually better I guess because um, and I'm not sure if it's actually capable of uh, of rebooting properly uh, it, it just doesn't hang the complete system but yeah I'll, I'll be back when this system has rebooted rebooting the system So, I guess running the older software is, well, I mean, it's possible. They claim binary compatibility, and yeah. Um, let's see if uh, what this actually entails. So, four gigabytes. memory registers a system call super block now what these emulators of course do is that they reserve a bit of memory to work with and they change that memory from within the app and uh, yeah you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but it was a segment fault. So probably uh, that piece of code wanted to change a bit of memory that was reserved or corrupted. Um, let me see, apps, so emulator. So uh, SMS Plus isn't a good idea to run Nintendo 64, Newpen. It has missing library, so it needs SDL. Okay, that might still work. SNX, SNX. Oh, that has the same segmentation fault. <laughs> All right, so libz. Oh, I guess, no. So, yeah. Libz, I think is part of the, uh, of the compression thing I'm not sure if that actually uh, yeah um, can you so yeah it's it's alpha it's alpha or beta software you know it still it still needs uh, quite a fair bit of work I'm not sure Ah, there it is. So I guess the old emulators I should be very careful of. Visual Boy Advance. Visual Boy Advance. Oh, bloody hell. That just says, okay, and yuppie. It's, uh, it's a CC. Oh, 
SDL, so it's, it needs the SDL library in a specific spot. Uh, yeah, oh, Commodore 64, of course. Uh, Frodo is, uh, Frodo is a, a compile from February 1999. And it actually still seems to work. Sit emulation, digital, uh, limit speed, enable signals, processor similar. Oh. And this should be D64B. Select an image file, demo of course, uh, boost design, open, um, start. Oh, this is actually interesting. Load, load the directory. Now Frodo isn't the best emulator out there. load in and see what happens. Colors are a bit off, but the Frodo colors always were off. I remember running Frodo, I believe it was on the Amiga for the first time and I actually was quite amazed to see in a window Commodore 64 up here. Now this is the non-cycle exact uh, fastest running version of it. You have the uh, more cycle exactor versions like the PC and the SC. And uh, still sound isn't working. It's, I mean, uh, the, the, the stack is working and the sound card is recognized, but it's just not outputting. And um, yeah, this is a demo running, a 2002 demo running on the Commodore 64. And you can actually see that there's like these little mistakes that are a bit different. So Frodo is not the emulator that you want to run your demos on uh, with per per pixel perfect about Frodo Christian Bauer yeah that's pretty cool but of course you have a B vice and you can actually emulate a Vic and you can emulate a plus four And that's actually, oh, well, it's, it's having a few issues, but we're running two. So you can also have um, the pet. And these are just, you know, compiles of April, April 1st, 2017. So and that's a very nice uh, phosphor glow. This is another one. One of these business machines. And that refuses to initialize the uh, the bias or something. Another counter two, counter business machine two. A very pet like. Also seems to oh there it is. doesn't want to do keyboard input. That's actually quite a bit of a thing. Let's see if the Commodore 64 actually does keyboard input because it should. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it does. So that's nice. Whoops. star is the keyboard mapping is uh, it's it's off oh well I could I can't program a little program so but yeah it's uh, it's a bit clunky on these older systems especially with uh, B vice being rather uh, hefty <laughs> so yeah Commodore 64 emulation now I did 
uh, download some stuff, some new stuff. Uh, I think we have to go to the Bihaiku and then system and then apps because there's newer stuff in there. Um, let's see. Swiss Army Knife, that's a new application that I just downloaded. What I did do was actually, um, if I go to apps, there's a, a repository uh, about system. So that's what you saw back then. Activity Monitor, uh, there's this um, a DOS box you just saw. Expander, GL info, and that's the OpenGL software implementation. I Haiku Depot. That's actually uh, uh, a depot where you can actually download the new software uh, for basically like a package manager on Linux. Um, so yeah, there's there's a ton of uh, there's a ton of packages on there. You can have different categories. Uh, video, system utilities, productivity, curious, there probably are a few office uh, applications on there as well. Uh, PDF viewer, uh, LibreOffice, oh look, there's a whole LibreOffice on there. Oh, I, could, I could install it, let's see. So, Powerful Office Suite, install. These aren't huge packages, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's the thing. They're really compact executables. And so it does, um, do the, uh, extra liber libraries and stuff. So it, it takes care of compatibility and, uh, and I guess that's why a lot of the older software crash of well, course segmentation faults because they do expect certain libraries to be in place that have, have been surpassed by this newer OS and of course not all calls to these libraries are fully backwards compatible if at all you know these libraries could be vastly redesigned so um, yeah if things didn't change that much um, you could you could actually have uh, a luck and, and you'll have a a system that just uh, let me see games so it's nicely multi-threaded so there's a lot of Linux games available for it DOSBox that I Duke Nukem Tax Racer Free Droids RPG Spectrum Emulator oh Spectrum Emulator that is that's a mandatory of course I mean if you emulate Commerce 64, you should also emulate a Spectrum, right? I mean, that's just a given. So, I expect. So, yeah, there's there's a ton of uh, games that you can actually uh, recognize from Lib Spectrum, of course, Supply Changes. Meso Gallius, Gallius Meso, that's actually cool. Oh, 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 that's interesting. Look at that. Gallius Maze on uh, a new Gallius Maze. So there's a Nintendo emulator that I installed. Uh, oh, look, this is uh, SDL, Mixer, SDL Sound, and an MPEG. So it's probably using an, an uh, MP3 for music. Open Tyrion. That's a active, available Open Tyrion. Let's install that. So active is when that's uh, when it's installed, and you can update. Oh, RetroArch is also available on it. So yeah, basically, I mean, you could use this as a, as a retro gaming system. 
uh, my drive's a bit too small, but yeah, perhaps um, it's uh, fast enough for uh, for some retro gaming. So the butterfly effect, yeah. So quite interesting to see all that. Army knife. What's army knife? Army knife is a tool uh, that allows you to change attributes in sound files which I have little use of as uh, the sound isn't working on this version yet. So DOS box we've seen, I could run that again. So this makes available a ton of, um, and I believe it's actually running pretty fast. Um, no frame skips, not sure how high up it'll go. But to have DOSBox, you know, it's actually quite interesting. It opens up a ton of older software. Uh, let me see. Launchbox, of course, is the uh, the dock mail network status. Oh, that's interesting. It's like a little a little uh, app. Poorman's web. That's uh, a web server. I know power status. Yeah, that's if you are running from a battery. Uh, process control, remote desktop, oh, remote desktop, screenshots, show image, software updater, oh yeah, that's, that allows you to update the software from the depositories and basically hopefully not break anything. Oh, this Wonder Brush, this is actually the newer Wonder Brush, uh, possibly with, yeah, you can actually see that this, this version doesn't have the, uh, the, the draw update issues with the uh, jumping distortion of the uh, of the uh, background blocks so yeah basically it's using newer libraries I guess uh, which which actually works Z26 I think that was actually a, a, a Commodore 64 emulator play a game and then we go to apps emulator Atari 2600 ROMs and then Beam Rider. Now I'm not sure how the functions function keys are. Perhaps the oh, yeah. And then can I just oh look. And then yep. Yeah. So it's not running full speed. This is running slow. And but it's nice. It's there. Whoa, that's interesting. I don't want to have. I want my desktop normal again. Let me see. Uh, config, no. Heiko system preferences. Whoops. Screen. Screen. I want to have it. The widescreen aspect ratio that I had. Uh, 1920. Um, like so. Yeah, this is what I was running. Keep. Perhaps this is actually better. Yeah, this is actually better than I was using. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know widescreen was possible, but everything looks a bit nicer. Um, let me see, add-ons, demos, packages, apps. Here we go. Uh, not sure what this is, BAE. Is it Amiga or what is this? Oh, this is a sound sound editor. So yeah, no use for that at the moment. PDF clock work. That's a clock. Fuse. Oh, that's the spectrum. It might nag about. Oh, it might not nag about. But it. It stopped the spectrum dead in its tracks at the initialization phase. And it's it's in guru meditation or something like that. LibreOffice, well I'll just go ahead. I'll let this eat up memory possibly. <laughs> so LibreOffice writer. Let's see if that actually will execute. And it may actually 
actually be that this is taking up so much processing power that this actually refuses to launch. So I may actually have to reboot. Restart system. Oh, there it is. Fuse has support. Ah. Ah. Fuse may not abort the shutdown system. Restart system. Application Fuse has aborted the shutdown process. Yeah. Uh, power off. Bam. So yeah, I'm running this in Kimu. Q Kim Kimu Qmi Kimu. Just to. Uh, and it probably, yeah, it probably didn't take the uh, the new screen settings, but I'll I'll change them around. So uh, let me see. System preferences. So that's that's the screen, right? Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll go back to apps, and then we'll uh, see. Fuse Fuse took down the system the other the other time. Does it still take down the system? Yep. It's just not. It's just not having it, is it? It's just. Uh, so if I go to Terminal, system, apps, and uh, terminal. Can I just kill fuse threads? No. So that's that's uh, a kernel thing, but I should be able to kill the process, right? I mean, uh, let me see. Process controller, yeah. Oh, in the desk bar. So that's actually this. And I should. Close all the, it just doesn't want to. Let's see if I can <laughs> delete fuse. No, so it's read only, so it's locked. Okay, that's that's cool. Uh, yeah, there's no choice but to reboot, I guess. So yeah, I mean, haiku. It's nice. <laughs> The concept is nice, but uh, you actually see that. So let's manage that fuse application out of there. The spectrum taking down the haiku, the mighty haiku. Uh, let me see. It's probably in package management. Uh, where is it? Haiku depot. Yeah, let's get it rid of uh, future packages. No, all categories, games. Oh, of course, I can just type in fuse, but it needs to read the repository data. Fuse. Let's carefully deinstall it. Ah, look at that. So it's active, and can I deinstall it? Uh, uninstall, yeah. So fuse, it's not working. Might be that the ROMs aren't included, and that it just hangs. But then it should, it should actually uh, give a warning, right? I mean. 
So fuses, fuses there, off, off, off of there. Let's see if I can more or less open up a word processor, a modern day word processor. And now I could have jinxed it. I probably have jinxed it. Calculator. Yeah, I think I jinxed it by, oh, there it is. I'm just uh, being very <laughs> impatient. LibreOffice Writer, so yeah. So LibreOffice Writer will probably appear, whoops. And this is another LibreOffice Writer. And LibreOffice, oh gosh. It's really hogging the system now. <laughs> oh gosh, and Office Draw, yeah, I've been clicking away, of course. Now this would happen on my old systems, you know, checking out Untitled 4, like four instances of Libra's Office Draw. Oh gosh, I'm probably better off closing all instances, closing all. I'll look at that. It's tip of the day. Okay. So, this is me typing in a text on a retro OS that is modern and uh, modern day word processor as well. Yeah. So the fact that just not every run, everything runs on it, like Maze of Gallius, really interested to see if it just works. Ah, it doesn't. <laughs> it might actually use a graphics mode that it is not compatible. Uh, with but yeah it remains a mystery maze of gallias that's that's for sure uh songs devil frog okay so that's something uh perhaps that's from the milky milky tracker i love trackers Load is probably, oops, that's probably those uh, MEV uh, songs, Devil Grog, nope, this is a, a tracker, a seven or perhaps even more, an eight. An eight uh, voice tracker XM files. Of course, without uh, the sound card working, it's not something I care to check out. Mupin 64 plus. So let's see if I can open a file. Nintendo 64. Probably is going to crash because of Super Mario 64. Because of you know the the screen not um, supporting OpenGL or something like that, it might give a blank screen or it's just like super slow. Uh, oh look at that, Mupin Plus started. So you just have to be patient. Oh look at that. So it's it's running software OpenGL here. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, but if you uh, run this uh, with hardware that the uh, OpenGL stack is directly supporting, this may actually be not too shabby. But it's nice to see this run. 
I mean, it does open up. I mean, if you are into your minimalistic desktops, you know, and you don't need a lot of super fancy uh, programs, and you just want some light entertainment, uh, Superplex, yeah, this is a uh, Nemes DOS original, I think. Can I make it smaller? Yeah, perhaps that, that actually makes it a bit faster. I'm not sure. Uh, welcome to Superplex. Let's let's play. <laughs> yeah, I like this game. This is Boulder Dash on steroids. I played this a ton. This actually, I think this this also worked on uh, 286 machines. So yeah, not bad. Open Tyrion, another. MS DOS original, Tyrion 2000, I think it was. Epic game, very nice shooter, full game, normal. Ah, uh, yeah, play the next level. It's playing it with uh, with the mouse is actually best, but the mouse tracking is a bit off, so yeah, I, I should possibly use the yeah, yeah. But it's a very nice. Euro style shooter. Quick level, quick game. Has very nice music. And then quit. So yeah, that works as well. But yeah, you don't need BOS for this or Haiku for that. Because you can do that on a lot of other systems. Q and play, I think Q and play was a movie player or a media player that caters for uh Winamp skins and stuff, but oh, look at that! It it opens up. I really need to be patient, you know. These older. Let me see playlists, player playlist. Let's see if I can add um, a directory, and I will go to computer home um, apps. No, the optional thing. I don't think it, it allows me to. Oh, system. No oh, optional. There it is. Uh, movies. Let's see if uh, it allows me to play that Memorial Day. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Yeah, it does it without sound. But this actually is uh, folk from the. Uh, B development team throwing down monitors and they may actually be Mac monitors or something like that, not sure. So this is filmed from below. Oh, you can actually see what type of codec this is, uh, AVI. Um, yeah, I should, I should be patient because So that, that stopped, and I selected the other file. Well, you can actually have YouTube playing, but uh, <laughs> close all. Yikes. So yeah, uh, running it in a virtual environment like this. I mean, it does something with the sound, yet it doesn't want to output sound. Uh, system, apps, maze of gallons, are you sure it's not gonna? Perhaps it needs a different uh, screen resolution or something like that, but it should reset it, right? No, it just refuses outright. Ah, uh, Milky Track and Mupin. Um, vision. 
vision. So I think this is a re uh, yeah, a mir mirk, mirk clone. But let's see. I mean, what's the what's the most interesting thing to just uh, use is of course um, a web browser. So web positive is a modern day web browser. And it should support. So it's basically using WebKit, I think, the same browser kit that a lot of modern browsers are using. Before you continue, uh, I agree. Now, playing back movies on a Core 2 Quad or a Core 2 Duo um, wasn't a lot of fun. And I see that loading in this <laughs> website on Web Positive. Well, I mean, you could say it's a positive experience because, well, you know, the website is actually loading and a lot of more, a lot of older software actually doesn't have uh, this type of uh, support finish. So if I click on one of those clips, will it open up a video player? <laughs> Jan Roos. Op dit kanaal ga ik reviews geven aan allerlei meuk. Neem snel een abo en like. Daarnaast ben ik te volgen op Instagram. La vie Jan Roos. <laughs> That's cool. Ik geloof dat ik Jan Roos wel een subje geef. Want dat is, uh, dat is niet verkeerd. Jan Roos. Uh, ja. Volgens mij. I think an ad is actually showing. Probably can, can jump to his uh, video. Well, you know, it sort of works. It sort of works. Pretty cool. But not as my day-to-day -day real driving system. 